now. Please type a message quickly. If it is OK, you can hear me, then I can start. OK, good. OK, G, good. Now, students, we are starting with the we are just finishing the topic which we have started last time. And in the previous session, you can view the record. You can watch the video and you will see that we were talking about variances. And in the variances, I was telling you that the variance is a difference of standard or budget with actual results. And we have discussed last time also that if the answer is uh, like you can have the variances of two types when you take the difference of these two. So you can have the favorable variance. Or you can have the adverse variances. What is the favorable variance? Any variance or any difference between standard and actual if it bring the positive impact on the profit. If it increases the profit or it bring the positive impact on the profit, it is called as favorable variance. And any variance which is decreasing our profits, so it is called as negative variance or adverse variances. Or that variance which decreases your profit is called as adverse variances. So we must know about what is the variance means and what is the difference of the variance. It is the difference of standard and actual results. Now after this students, we should also know that what are the different type of the variances we calculate. If you know about like the variances can be of cost variances we can have and revenue variances we can have. And in my previous discussion, I was listing down that we are having different type of the variances for the costs and for the revenues. In the cost variances, I was explaining you that we are having the material cost variances. Then we are having labor cost variances. Then we are having overhead variances. These are different cost variances. Under the vari overhead variances, we are having further two variances. It is called as variable overhead variances and fixed overhead variances. Variances can be of two types. It can be fixed. It can be variable. Then we have discussed last time about the material cost variances can be also usage variance, price variance, and it can be also total variance. Labor variances can be further divided into labor efficiency variance. Then you are having labor rate variance or and the third one is total variance. Variable overhead variances further we can analyze that it can be efficiency variance. It can be expenditure variance. And we can also have the third type of variable overhead variances. It can be total variance. And the fixed overhead variances can be calculated under marginal costing and under absorption costing. Under marginal costing, I was telling you that we will have two variances. One is called as fixed overhead expenditure variance. And the other one is called as the total variance, which is the same answer as like fixed overhead variances. So fixed overhead expenditure variance is also known as the total overhead variance for the marginal costing. And under the marginal costing, you are having variances like fixed overhead expenditure variance. And you are having volume variance. And under the volume variance, we are having further formulas. We are having capacity variance and efficiency variance. So this is generally you can say that we are having different type of variances that we need to calculate. Now under the revenue variances, we are having the uh, sale. It is also called as price uh, say sales variances or revenue variances. And under the sales variances, we can have sales price variance. And we can have sales. Volume. Variances. Under the sales volume variance, we can have it can be calculated under marginal costing and it can be also calculated under absorption costing. So today we are going to observe like what are the different formulas? What are the formulas we are having for different variances? And more detail will be coming into the paper F2. So this topic will be 
very much tested in the paper F2. You can say that it is one of the favorite area also in the paper MA2, which will be tested in the paper. And this is also my observation that sometime the examiner tests around 10 to 15 questions only for variances in the paper. So whenever you are preparing this uh, topic, you have to be very careful and don't leave any stone unturned or don't leave any loophole when you are practicing this topic. So today we are going to learn only the formulas. How do we calculate it? So first of all, we start with material cost variances. Material cost variances are students, those variances which tells us the difference of the material cost, standard material cost and actual material cost. The first variance in this list is known as usage variance. Now, what is the usage variance? The usage variance basically tells you about how you are using the raw material. By using the more raw material, what is the impact on your cost? So that is your usage variance. So what is the formula for the usage variance? Here we'll be using the shortcut to calculate the variances and I would recommend you to use the same approach or same shortcuts so you will also not feeling any difficulty in paper F2 or F5 level. So the formula for usage variance which tells us by using raw material what is the impact on your profit or impact on the cost. So what is the formula? The formula is written as standard quantity minus actual quantity used multiplied by standard price. So I'm using this notation. SQ stands for standard quantity. AQ stands for actual quantity used. And SP stands for standard price. Now you can see in the bracket we are taking the difference of standard quantity and actual quantity. What is the meaning of standard quantity and how do you calculate the standard quantity? What is the formula? The formula is actual production multiplied by standard usage per unit. Now, if you are having the actual production, actual production is basically in measured in units. So if you multiply actual production units, multiply by usage, the standard usage or your expected usage, so it tells you that to make this actual units, how much you will be expecting to use. And then you will take the difference with actual quantity. Actual quantity means actual raw material that you have used. Multiply by standard price. Now we assume some figures. Let's suppose your actual production is 1000 units. This is your actual production. And you have decided that you will be using to make one unit you will be using sorry 10 kgs per unit this is your expected usage in the last class i have explained to you what is the meaning of standard and what is the meaning of dip budget so you can watch that video to understand it more now in this case student actual production is 1000 and the standard usage is 10 dollar 10 kg and let's suppose actual quantity we have used, AQ stands for actual quantity used. It is, for example, 12,000 kgs. And we have also set a standard that it is called a standard price. Standard price is a standard for buying the raw material. That you set a standard that at which price you will be buying the raw material. For example, like it is dollar five per kg. And Let's suppose we also have actual price that you have paid is dollar three per kg. So you pay actually AP stand for actual price that you have paid. SP stand for standard price that you are expected to pay. AQ stand for actual quantity that you are using to make this number of units, 1000 units. Actually, you're using 12,000 kgs. Now we put it in the formula and we calculate it. First of all, we have to calculate standard quantity in total. And what is the formula for the standard quantity in total? I have just written here actual production. What is the actual production? 1000 times. What is the standard usage? 10. So it means that to make 1000 units, you are expected to use how many kgs? 10,000 kgs. But to make the same units of 1000, how much actual quantity you have used? You have used 12,000 kgs. 
now student it is quite obvious that you are using more than your standard and when you use more material than standard so it will increase your cost so we were supposed to use 10000 kg but we are using 12000 kg to make the same number of units it means that the cost is increasing so now in this case standard quantity minus actual quantity we have take the difference and then we we'll multiply by standard price so multiplied by standard price what is the standard price we are having as per the formula 5 dollar per kg so in total it is 10000 dollar negative or it is adverse variance it is negative variance because due to using more raw material your cost is increasing that is 10000 dollar now we also calculate another variance which is known as the material price variance this is a second type of the variance in our list so material price variance is what is the formula for the material price variance and what it does it tells you about the material price variance is basically the variance which tells you that what the price you were supposed to pay for your raw material and what the actual price you are paying so the difference of standard price which you are supposed to pay minus actual price what you are paying multiply by actual quantity purchased or used in variances one thing you remember that student in variances there is no closing stock or there is no stock so in other words what you buy what you purchase the raw material you actually use it you consume 100% raw material now in this case i was assuming that my standard price is how much was my standard price 5 so i have a target i have a standard that i will be paying to my supplier 5 dollar but actually i negotiate with him and i pay him 3 dollar it means that due to the difference of price your profit will increase once again it is same as like you were supposed to pay 5 and maybe you are getting a discount of 2 dollar that's why you are paying less so you are saving 2 dollar it means that actually what the raw material you are buying of 10000 kg so you are saving for every kg 2 dollar it means that somewhere you are saving your 24000 dollar and this is your favorable variance so the material price variance tells you the difference of the standard price and actual price and the usage variance tells you about the difference of expected usage and actual usage do you have any question till now any question students please give me the response very quickly so that i can know and we can discuss the other topic okay ji so what about the other student natasha has written what about the other students please type a message quickly okay so now we are going on to the next topic next variance type that is your material total variance material total variance d material total variance is calculated as basically the material total variance is calculated as usage plus price variance so one of the shortcut to calculate the total in totality you want to see that what the price you are paying higher or lower so you can add both answers of usage and price what was the usage variance it was 10000 adverse and what was the price variance 24000 favorable so you write it here usage variance is negative 10000 and plus it is price variance that is 24000 so the sign of higher will be coming up here So twenty four thousand minus ten thousand, so the answer is fourteen thousand dollar, and that is favorable because favorable variance is higher than adverse variance. So you can calculate your total variance. If you don't want to use this shortcut, you can also use the formula actually for the total variance, which is written as standard quantity into standard price minus actual quantity into actual price. You can use also this formula to calculate your total variance. now above we have calculated the standard quantity standard quantity was 
calculated here 10,000 kgs. So we use the same 10,000 kgs into what was the standard price we were supposed to pay five minus I'm writing the bracket. It is not negative. It is brackets. Then we are having the actual quantity into actual price. What was the actual quantity we are purchasing? 12,000 and what is the price we are paying actually three? So it is 36,000 and 50,000. So you can see that the answer is 14,000. That is positive or favorable answer. And you can see it matches with each other. In the paper, you don't need to prove that, okay, this is usage, this is price, and you add, and then you again calculate it. This formula is usually used when you do some reverse calculations to find out the figures. So up till now, we have covered the material variances. Let's talk about now the second broad categorization of the variance. It is called as the labor variances. The labor variances can be categorized as labor efficiency variance, labor rate variance, and the total variance, labor total variance. Labor total variance is very simple, like you can add these two variances and then you can get an answer of total variance. Now coming on to the efficiency variance students. Efficiency variance basically tells you about due to the level of efficiency of the workers. So what is the impact on your cost or what is the impact on your profit? For example, like I ask a worker to produce one unit in five hours but he produced one unit in three hours. It means that he's efficient and he's saving two hours for me. And if he's saving two hours for the company or for, the, for me, it means that he is saving my cost. And this is his efficiency that he's doing the same work in less hours. It is an efficiency. Now, what is the formula of efficiency variance? So it is same as like your usage variance for the material, but we will just change some alphabets like I write the formula as standard hours minus actual hours worked into standard rate. So Q is replaced with H and P is replaced with hours H and R is replaced with P. So it is same formula of like usage variance, but just you are changing this hours into the price into the hours uh, actual quantity into the hours and then you are just replacing with the sr with p now the rate variance formula is standard rate minus actual rate that you have paid to the workers into actual hours so you can see there is a similarity between the usage and labor rate, uh, usage and price variance for the material and we are calculating here. Now let's take some assume figures and then we do the calculations. Let's suppose students we are producing actual units. We are producing our actual production is 8000 units and standard hours per unit is two hours per unit. What is my standard to make one unit? Two hours. What we were supposed to make for one unit? Two hours we were supposed to take. Now, <clears throat> let's suppose the actual hours the workers has used to make the product that is 18,000 hours. In other words, like to do this production, how many actual hours we are taking in total? 18,000 hours. Then we are having standard rate. Standard rate is that rate which we were supposed to pay our workers. Like we have this rate, expected rate to pay them. This is called a standard rate. SR stand for standard rate. AR stand for actual rate. And AH stand for actual hours worked. So standard rate we were we negotiated and we were supposed to pay them six dollar per hour but actually we are paying the rate actual rate we are paying is dollar for example 4.5 dollar per hour 
Now you can also notice that here some somewhere I am saving my 1.5 dollar per hour. I am saving some rate. Now we apply first of all this formula. We need to calculate standard hours in total. And what is the formula you'll be using to calculate the standard hours in total? Actual production multiplied by standard hours per unit. Because this standard hours is given to you in unit basis, so we have to calculate in total. And the formula is actual units multiplied by standard hours per unit to convert it in total. And because we are taking the difference of total total in the bracket. So what is my actual production? 8,000. What is my standard hours to produce one unit? Two hours. It means that we were supposed to take 16,000 hours to produce 8,000 units. But to produce 8,000 units, actually we have taken 18,000 hours. Multiply by what is the standard rate? $6 as per the formula. Now you can see in the bracket, I was supposed to take 16,000, but I'm taking 18,000 hours. It means that the workers are not efficient and due to their inefficiency, we are paying our cost is going to be increased by $12,000 adverse. So this is adverse variance or negative variance because it, this, the cost is going to be increased. So in other words, like they are taking actual hours, they are not efficient, they are inefficient. What about the rate variance? What is the formula for the rate variance? Rate variance tells you that are you paying them lower rate than the standard or you are paying them higher rate actually than the standard. So the formula is standard uh, rate minus actual rate into actual hours worked. In this case, what is my standard rate? Six. What I am paying them actually 4.5 for how many hours actual hours? 18,000 hours. Now you can get the figures and tell me what is the answer you will be getting. How much is the total variance? in dollar one point five is the difference into eighteen thousand it means that you are saving twenty seven thousand dollar you are saving and it is favorable variance or positive variance because you are paying them lower rate than standard rate so this is how we calculate our students the rate variance. Now the last variance is the total efficient total rate variance or total labor rate labor variance. And what is the formula for the total labor cost variance? It is calculated as standard hours into standard rate minus actual hours into actual rate. Same approach as we have used into the material total variance. So we can also follow the same pattern here. What was my standard hours? Standard hours are 16,000. Standard rate was 6 minus actual hours is how many actual hours we are taking? 18,000. And the actual rate is 4.5. So we can calculate the answer and you can get it will be your total labor rate, uh, total labor variances. G, any question? Any question here for the labor variances? Please confirm me. Okay, good. So we have discussed the two main variances, labor rate variances, labor variances and material variances. Now we are going to learn about the next type of the variance which is the which is known as variable overhead variances. Let me change the marker so you can easily view what we are learning here. Which color you like? Now we are talking about student variable overhead variances. And the variable overhead variances are very similar as like your labor variances. Very same, same as like labor variances. But with a minor change, huh? there will be a very minor change and you will be getting it. In the variable overhead variances students, we are having two main, three main variances that we calculate. One variable overhead variance is known as 
variable override efficiency variance. Second one is called as variable overhead expenditure variance. And the last one is called as total variance, which is obviously the sum of these two, and you'll be getting this total answer. Now, student, when I write the formula, you will see that how it is going to be same as like your labor efficiency variance, that is variable overhead variance, variable overhead efficiency variance. The formula for the variable overhead efficiency variance is standard hours minus actual hours. That is the same as like your labor efficiency variance. In the bracket, it is going to be the same. Multiply by the variable overhead. V or oh, sorry, it is standard VOAR. What is the VOAR basically? It is called as variable overhead absorption rate. So this is the rate we usually use to charge our variable overheads. And usually the formula for the variable overhead absorption rate is calculated as budgeted variable overheads divided by budgeted labor hours. So this is only the difference when we are calculating the variable overhead efficiency variance that outside of the bracket we are just using the rate to charge variable overheads in the labor variances we use rate to pay them so this is different now the variable overhead expenditure variance is having a formula that is standard variable overhead absorption rate minus actual variable overhead absorption rate multiplied by actual hours so you can see here in the bracket, we are taking the difference of standard rate and actual variable overhead rate that we are using to charge the overheads. And the total variance will be, the formula will be standard hours into standard variable rate minus actual hours into actual variable overhead rate. It is same as like SH into SR and AH into AR, but only this rate is different rate from the labor rate variance. So you must know the formula by heart. If you don't memorize the formula, so you will be in big trouble. And by the way, when I'm explaining you this topic, so I'm explaining you this topic from the point of view of the paper F2. So in other words, it's going to be the same topic you are going to learn in the paper F2. And by the way, over there, I will not be spending too much to discuss about this variances. Now we talk about the last in our list for the cost variances. It is called as fixed overhead variances. Now student fixed overhead variances, you can calculate under two approaches. You can calculate under marginal costing approach and you can use absorption costing use uh, approach to calculate your variances. So under marginal costing, when you are calculating any fixed overhead variances, so you are basically calculating, you only calculate two variance. One is called as fixed overhead expenditure variance, which is also known as total fixed overhead variance under marginal costing. So this is the same thing, but you are naming it differently. Now, what is the formula for fixed overhead expenditure variance? The formula is very simple. Budgeted fixed overheads minus actual fixed overheads. So you are taking the difference of budgeted and actual. For example, like students, you budget that by 2021, you will be doing expenditure, your planned expenditure for the fixed overheads are $80,000. But when the actually you incur the cost, so you just incur $60,000 fixed overheads. It means that you are saving 20,000 fixed overheads and that is your favorable variance because you are saving your fixed cost. 
So simple formula is there: budgetary fixed overheads and minus actual fixed overheads. Simple formula. Now, what about the under absorption costing? What are the different formulas that we are having to learn? Under the absorption costing, student, we calculate three different type of variances for fixed overheads. One is called as fixed overhead expenditure variance, which is same as like marginal costing, which we have just talked about here. It is same as like in the absorption costing. Then we are having the additional variance that we don't calculate under the marginal costing. It is called as volume variance, fixed overhead volume variance. And then also we calculate total fixed overhead variance, which is a sum of these two. So I'm not going to repeat the formula for fixed overhead expenditure variance under absorption costing. So whether you use absorption costing or you use marginal costing, fixed overhead variance is same as I mentioned to you, and the formula is same. Nothing changed. Even you can say that this is twenty thousand favorable under the absorption costing. What about the volume variance? This I have to explain to you because it is new. Volume variance is basically student tells you about that are you producing more units than budgeted units or you are producing less units actually than the budgeted units. And the formula for the volume variance is actual production. Actual production. Production is also known as to volume minus budgeted production units into F O A R per unit. Now you know about what is F O A R. F O A R is basically a rate to charge fixed overheads, and the formula is budgeted fixed overheads divided by budgeted base. Or budgeted units. This is the formula we have learned. Now, this volume variance can also be written as. You can also write this formula if you open the bracket. You can also write this formula as absorbed overheads minus budgeted overheads. It is also the difference of absorbed and budgeted. Now, students. This rate, which we usually use for FOR, is your budgeted rate. So when you multiply the budgeted rate per unit by budgeted units, so it will be known as budgeted overheads in total. Now I try to explain to you with the help of some figures. Let's suppose, student, your actual production is you are doing some production, and your actual volume or actual production is seven thousand units. But you are having a budget to produce. Five thousand units. It means that somewhere you are producing more volume. Na, actually, actual production is more than the budget. Is it good or bad? It's good because you are producing more than the budget, more than the planning. And let's suppose the FOR, which is already given to you, is dollar three per unit. So, what is the formula for the volume variance, fixed overhead volume variance? The fixed overhead volume variance is calculated as your actual production, that is seven thousand, minus budgeted production, that is five thousand, into three dollar per unit. So it is six thousand dollar favorable because you are producing more number of units. So it is good. So you have to see in the bracket what you are doing more. Now, students, the Overhead variances are over. Fixed overhead variances are finished. Now we talk about the sales variances or revenue variances. That is the last in our list for the variances. So revenue variances we call this as, or sales variances we call this as. Under the sales variances, we can calculate our sales price variance. And we can also calculate our sales volume variance. Now, what is the formula for sales price variance? Sales price variance basically tells you the difference of two things: actual sale price minus budgeted sale price 
into actual quantity sold. So I'm using the notation as ASP. ASP stand for actual sale price minus budgeted sale price. That is the BSP. And AQS means actual quantity sold. If the answer is positive, it is favorable variance. If the answer is negative, it is adverse. For example, like student, you have selling a good and actually you sold a product or the good at $12 per unit. <clears throat> but you were supposed to sell this product at $15 per unit. Now it means that your plan was to sell at 15, but actually you are selling at a low price. It means that you are giving some discount and that's why your profit will be less. Then you are having actual quantity sold. Let's suppose we are sold 1000 units in total. So what is the formula for the sales variance, sales price variance, actual sale price that is 12 minus 15 into 1000. So it means that you are having adverse variance of 3000 due to this 3000 difference. You are decreasing your profit. It is adverse variance. Now we come on to the sales volume variance. The sales volume variance, remember that student, it can be calculated under marginal costing and it can be calculated under absorption costing. Under marginal costing, the formula is actual quantity sold. That is the same thing as like AQS minus budgeted quantity, which was supposed to be sold. Multiply by standard contribution per unit or budgeted contribution per unit. Standard or budget is the same thing. This is the formula for under marginal costing. And absorption costing, it is same under the brackets, but outside of the bracket, it will be little different. So the formula is the actual quantity sold minus budgeted quantity to sell multiplied by standard profit per unit. Now you should also know that what is the difference between contribution and profit. The contribution is calculated as sale price minus variable cost. And the profit is calculated as sale price minus variable cost minus fixed cost. So the profit is used under the absorption costing and margin costing we use contribution. We have studied the topic CVP analysis and over there we have learned the difference of profit and contribution. What is there? Now let's suppose students we are having actual quantity sold is 1000 and with this I am just adding some figures and uh, let's suppose my budgeted quantity to sell was 6650 units. This was my plan to sell. But actually how many units I'm selling? 1000. And let's suppose standard contribution is given to you, which is already given to you. You don't need to calculate it. It is dollar six per unit. So if you are calculating the formula for this sales volume variance, the formula will be written as Actual quantity sold is 1000 and you were supposed to sell 650. It is a good sign that you are selling more than budget. So your profit will be increased. Multiply by standard contribution that is 6. So what is the answer? 350 into 6. So it will be giving you a positive answer. So 1000 minus 650 into 6 dollar. So by 2100, you are favorable or you are positive because you have sold more units than budget. Now, if in case you are given with a standard profit per unit, which is usually lower than the contribution because you are also deducting the fixed cost. So that's why it might be, for example, dollar four per unit. So within the bracket is same, but outside of the bracket only the we are using the profit figure. So what is the formula 
1000 is actual quantity sold 650 was planned to sell into dollar 4 per unit so the answer will be 350 into 4 is going to be 1400 dollar favorable this is positive or favorable variance so students we have learned today the formulas of variances and i try to explain to you basically the formulas and uh, we have seen like how these variances arise and, and uh, what is the reasoning behind basically the variances are used to control the costs and basically on the basis of variances on the answers of variances students we can take some control measures if it is negative variance we can take some control actions and we can try to bring our results same as like our planned results or better than the planned results so the company calculate this different type of the variances to analyze the cost and the revenues from the examination point of view you should learn all these formulas by heart and the uh, one thing that you can do to memorize these formulas are what is the approach you can follow like at least write these formulas which i was discussing with you at least two to three times with your own hands two to three times you have to write it down okay ji so when you write two or three times so automatically you will memorize the formulas okay so this was all about the variances and almost you can say 90 percent from the perspective of f2 we have covered and i have already told you the importance of this paper this topic particularly the variances so without the variances in other words you can say that without variances your paper of management accounting whether it is f2 whether it is ma2 whether it is whatever the management accounting paper it is never completed without variances and you can expect to get around 10 to 15 questions only on the variances only on the variances so you can see the importance and the other thing that is important about the variances is that student is not going to leave you also in the paper f5 in the paper f5 we will revise this basic variances the same formula i revise plus also we learn about advanced variances over there and then also it is also be learned in the paper p5 that is advanced paper of acca last papers so in all the management accounting paper whether it is at the basic level advanced level or very advanced level so you should know about the formulas of variances so this topic is also finished now let's see here what is left over in our paper ma2 and then we will continue with the practice session once the syllabus is over so i will start doing the practice with you i have already mentioned into my previous videos so if i open the ma2 syllabus so you can see here where we have reached in our syllabus so usually the first chapter student it is same as like in ma1 we have studied management information i will be assigning you to read at your own cost accounting system and cost recording we have also covered in ma1 so you can also study this topic at your own and in these first two chapters if you get any problem you can discuss with me so usually i assign these two topics to the students cost classification we have already covered material chapter we have already covered inventory management material cost chapter number four it is already been discussed chapter number five it was about the labor cost we have also covered this accounting for overhead margin and absorption costing we have already calculated we have already learned job and process is the last chapter that is left over in the next class we will start a discussion from here and then we have also covered cvp analysis and by the way i have also sent you the questions and answers for the cvp analysis you can see in your previous messenger uh, i have sent you the cvp question bank i hope you have tried these questions on the cvp and in the next class if you get any problem in this cvp analysis so you discuss with me problems and then we can continue for the classes
short term decision making it is also completed capital investment appraisal it is also completed cash management it is completed information for comparison is also completed this was the variances chapter which i was discussing with you budgeting and variance in an all that so we are having only the last chapter of the job badge and process costing most of the area of job badge and process costing we have covered in paper ma1 so the only the additional knowledge which we get here is about our process costing so advanced little bit advanced process costing we will be learning and which is at the same level as like f2 and previously student i told you already that this cvp analysis you don't have in the f2 you will be learning this cvp topic in paper f5 short term to see making you will learn in the f5 capital investment you will learn in f2 and also f9 cash management you learn in f2 and also f9 information for comparison you will learn in f2 and f5 job edge and process it is only in paper f2 marginal costing absorption costing you will also learn in f2 and also in paper f5 accounting for labor same thing which we have learned here it is in the paper f2 accounting for material cost same thing we will be learning in f2 cost classification same thing we will be learning in f2 okay with a little bit advanced okay ji so the topics which we have already covered here i am not going to repeat the same in f2 level because as from next month we are starting f2 and we will be completing very quickly the f2 because we have already the knowledge and understanding about these topics of ma2 and ma1 and the knowledge we have already taken up so we don't need to start from zero the f2 so you can say that when i will discuss f2 so almost i will be discussing around 30 to 40% but we will be doing the question in the context of f2 so that you can know the difference of f2 paper and ma2 paper or ma1 paper so little bit it the questions are at a higher level the knowledge and topic is the same names are same only also for the topic so you have to be ready by next month student you have to ready for the for the paper f2 now one more thing i want to share with you is today i was being in discussion with mr sham and uh, students like we uh, some of you have started the classes in the month of january this year okay the january you have started for fia january 2020 in january 2020 you have started so it means that your classes should be over in september for the fia i am only talking about the fia students so by 2020 september 2020 you have to finish all your papers and all the classes you have to finish and if you if you also recall that i was doing the classes for f1 f1 some of you were taking the f1 classes also in the previous like i was doing the classes on sunday online classes during the confinement so by the way the bsp is analyzing that which student has started fia in january and we will be giving you the classes for all your papers up to september after september if you don't sit for the exam so it will be your headache it will be your problem it will not be the problem for bsp so bsp is supposed to give you the classes up to september for the all the papers if any paper will be left over then exceptionally we will give you the classes but we are analyzing each and every student that when they have started and when they are going to be over with the sessions and as from october onward we will not be having any backlog of the students so please try to finish all your papers of fia and even for the acca students those who are following the acca f1 classes f2 classes and f3 classes so please you have to complete all your papers by september and the syllabus will be over by september by the way for your paper f2 and f3 if you have not taken f1 classes so we are also starting a badge as from 18th of july we are starting the f1 paper on saturday find so you can take the classes from me if you have not taken f1 if you have taken then there is no need to come for the classes 
because we will easily find out like you have already taken the classes so why you are again so please try to see the classes for f1 which is starting on 18th of july and then try to get the classes okay ji just give me one minute i i discuss with you other thing ji students so if you have any question you can ask me because you have to come for the f1 classes on 18th of july and the classes will be in the port louis campus now the other thing is that mr sham is also going to take your classes for the f3 and uh, he will be also starting on 18th of july but the classes will be in port louis itself so we will be having the campuses like three campuses will be coming for face to face session this is not online i am talking about this will be face to face session for you guys so it will be for the goodland students it will be for the portway students and it will be for the cupip students so once only you have to come to the portway so that you can catch up for your remaining papers and you can sit for the exams and please also make sure that uh, when you are coming for the for your classes so make sure that all your payments if any payment is overdue i'm not pointing out anyone but you know better like how many uh, how many of you have outstanding amount to be settled so please settle the payment so that you can be allowed or you can be given access to the classes and there are some students still i i can observe that they are following the classes but they have some outstanding amount to be paid so i would request you last time that please pay the remaining amount otherwise we will not be allowing any student to be enter in the classes because it was relaxation we were trying to give you we were trying to help you so please cooperate with us and we don't want to like uh, you know we don't want any student to be lose uh because of this issue of uh, salary or or the payments for the fees so please try to understand it and cooperate with us so this was all for today and please please revise the formulas that we have learned today and also read this chapter from the open tuition notes this is only your assignment okay students so see you then in the next week we will be having the last topic to discuss and those who are not coming for the classes so your friends your fellows so please tell them that uh, uh, i will be removing them as from next week we are also going to send them the message because continuously they are absent from the classes i'm not talking about you i'm talking about those who are not coming for the classes and this class is also recorded when they will be watching this video later on so they will understand that they are not following the classes and as from next week they will not be getting any access to the any of the materials uh or any of the lectures which we are giving online and that was we were sending you the messages sending you the emails also and also we are calling the students to remind them that the classes they have to follow if they will be absent so after september we will not be able to give them any classes any more but for this time it is a policy i have sent you the message also last night that we it is a policy now that you have to follow all the classes whatever the reasons are you are you are getting a problem you have to send me the message to tell me what is the reason you are absent for the classes so everybody should participate in this online classes and it is for your benefit not for my benefit so i am basically sacrificing my family time so i could have this i could have enjoyed my time this time with my family but i'm trying to help you guys 
and if they will not be taking seriously so it means that uh, i will be feeling very demotivated so please also you can communicate with them and tell them this is very important and these three months are very critical months for your exams and those who have not sit for any of the exam for fia so please plan this in your next month exam windows are open now plan it for october uh, august as from august you should sit for fia papers whatever the remaining papers are there one by one if you want to take two papers in one month so you can plan but it will be depending on to your budget as well so please take it seriously and this is what i wanted to share with you thank you very much see you in next class on next wednesday same timing okay ji good night take care and bye bye